Everybody. Hi, Hi Bill. <laughs> it's a pleasure to be here. Uh, thank you, uh, Michelle, and uh, for, uh, for setting this up. Um, this is a poem called uh, Fatuous Dialogue Number One. Was it true what you wrote in that poem? Pretty true. What do you mean pretty true? Was it true or wasn't it? It was as close as you get to truth in poems. I don't understand. Poems say things like, it was sunny when I knocked out Bobby Arnstein's teeth. Maybe it was sunny. Maybe it wasn't. Maybe it was Jimmy Irving, not Bobby Arnstein, whose teeth I knocked out. Maybe I didn't knock out Jimmy's teeth at all. Maybe I just pushed him. Maybe he hit his head on the railing. Maybe he didn't. Maybe his mother came running out screaming at me. Maybe she didn't. Maybe I didn't smell her perfume mixed with the stink of ginkgo berries as she stood over her unconscious boy. Maybe I did. So, poems are lies, pretty much. <laughs> now, I know uh, some of us write from prompts, so I decided to write a poem that perhaps you can uh, use in your uh, own work. So this is called Prompts. <clears throat> write a poem beginning with the word bed, in which the word horse or alpine appears in the seventh line. Write a poem in which fraternal twins each marry accountants. <laughs> Write a poem in which the last letter of the third word in every line spells out your home state. Write a poem in which your father is a dog and you are his leash. Write a poem constructed from four-syllable words in your favorite recipes. Write a poem of a thousand lines in which prime numbers figure prominently. Write a poem whose first word is also its last word, whose second word is also its 11th word, whose 49th word is also its 60th word, 17th word, and 39th word, and whose 100th word is a foreign word. <laughs> Write a poem in which Christian missionaries become dry cleaners. <laughs> Write a poem whose refrain is any three consecutive lines from Lycidas. Write a poem in which Cinderella is in prison for tax fraud. Write a poem whose total syllables number 613. <laughs> Write a poem in which the narrator is the weather. Write a poem in which the spirit of your dead cat tells you what to write your next poem about. <laughs> write a poem that does not contain the word red. <laughs> this is called Proverbs of the Converted. A journey of a thousand miles begins with a single ticket. A person is known by the company he shuns. A good man is hard to solicit. Where there's a will, there is death. A house divided against itself cannot multiply. If you lie down with writers, you'll get up with bullshit. <laughs> uh, this poem is called, How Modern Poets Die. <clears throat> Mark Strand. Over decades, a steady diet of poetry enlarged his heart. One day, it just burst. Robert Frost. A crazy idea that he could build a wall without mortar took possession of his mind. He piled stone on stone higher and higher until they toppled over, crushing him underneath. Wilfred Owen. A bullet not his own to the brain. Dylan Thomas. Many believe he died from alcohol poisoning. Not so. <clears throat> Early on, his brain caught fire. It took 20 years to burn itself out. T.S. Eliot, hardening of the arteries of the imagination. Allen Ginsberg, run over by New Jersey. Wallace Stevens, overdose of insurance. <laughs> William Carlos Williams, an obstetrician. He died when he discovered he could no longer deliver. John Berryman, jumped off Hart Crane's bridge. Hart Crane, a poet born without an ear. It didn't take long. Um, I go to a lot of open uh, mics, uh, and so these are some of the things I've heard at open mics I've been to over the years. This is from my book, Less Than It's called Overheard at the Open Mic. This poem is for my best friend who committed suicide last night. 
My girlfriend left me. Unbelievable. You won't understand this poem, but I'm going to read it anyway. <laughs> I'm not kidding. This actually happened to me. I'm not really a poet. Two more. You'll like this one. This one is funny. I bet I can shock you by saying the word shit. God healed my spirit. Pay attention. This one is deep. How beauteous is beauty. Two more. My childhood was fun. My wife is a bitch. I mean, I mean goddess. This poem is a double villanelle in seven parts. Part one. My dad lo loved me, but he never told me he loved me. Bastard. I'm glad I decided to keep the baby. Two more. Men keep staring at my body. Here's a poem about that. <laughs> I really like sex. Here's a poem about that. <laughs> You've heard this one before, but I want to read it again. The Holocaust happened in my soul. <laughs> the muse gives good head. <laughs> really? Two more. <laughs> I spent the summer in the Côte d'Azur. This one is untitled. Nature is so pretty. I just love Jack Gilbert. I wrote this last night. Two more. Three more. Four more. <laughs> this is called The Best Banana Bread. Cousin Ed was a spoiled banana no one wanted to touch. Inexcusably bruised, the kid turned rotten descending into dice and mash and reds and chew. I couldn't understand anything he said, like, my car has acne. He means rust, my father explained. Like, I want surgery for dinner. He means takeout, said my mom. I flexed my ego. I dismissed him as unlettered, a no account, a rube. My arrogance was raging and rancid. The condescension of a 13-year-old punk has no peer. Thank God we don't stay 13 forever. I thought my cousin, drug addict, alcoholic, tobacco addict, gambling addict, a total failure. I have different addictions. Who am I to judge his? I thought my cousin unsophisticated, no acquaintance with literature or art, ignorant of any kind of culture or class. Turns out he thought in metaphor which Aristotle calls genius. I thought that a banana that had turned black from age was garbage. Turns out that black bananas and sour milk make the best banana bread. I'll finish with this one, I guess. This is called Tariff Happy. Be subversive in your chores. Knock at the door of indecor and demand to be let in. Factor in your calculations the weight of longing among the self-impressed. Do not fob off. Keep a second set of books for Raphael. Inculcate imprudence. Wash with emotion, then with good soap. Expose those for whom freedom is greed. Scour the future so as to inure it. Keep lists. Change the air in your protocol every time you create a tattoo. Lock your knees at funerals. Hands off the secret levers of the world. Watch out for the kids of Narcissus. Thank you. <laughs>